All right, we had <coughs> excuse me, we had ended um we had ended a little bit abruptly um in the last portion. We had to get a little a little reset up a little reset up right here. And so one do right here is take a little is take a little look at, at, at numbers for a moment, right? And the numbers in this particular twenty seventh uh Torah portion reading and feeding. Now, we mentioned that we are happy that a lot of our brothers and sisters have been um, studying and, and, and their curiosity about Kabbalah. But please, our brothers and sisters, remember and recognize this covenant and who we are. You understand who we are. I mean, just don't think, well, this is the other guy's thing. You understand? This is, this is, this is their thing, and we just learn their thing so we'll know just what they do. But this is actually our thing. You understand that, that, we, have, that we have lost. Really, that we turned that our ancestors turned their backs on. Of course, that might be a little hard to believe at first, but this is exactly what happened. So here we have these particular numbers in this particular Torah portion, reading and feeding. Now, often it is said, mm -hmm, often it is said that the so-called Illuminati, you understand, the Illuminati uses these these numbers or the, some some or another of an occult group or so-called uh, secret society uses these, um, these numbers. And we say no. Uh, these are numbers, not that the Illuminati does not use these numbers, but the evildoers, to put it kind of more biblically and more scripturally, the evildoers, they abuse these numbers you see so they they take the things of jah they take the things of god now in this torah portion reading and feeding that we know as um taz -ariya, right as taz -ariya, which is the 27th um reading um in this uh cycle for 2012 april 21st uh this is april 21st the the day april 21st of um 2012 and this is the corresponding reading. Now, this is also connected with Bemen's Atu. Bemen's Atu, or Metzora in the Hebrew, right? And in the royal Amharic of the king of kings of Ketamawi Haile Selassie, of my father, of our father, Bemen's Atu, in the Bible, in the, in the Metaf Kedus, the Book of the Seven Seals in the royal Amharic. Now, for, for this is Bitaregis. If she, if she conceives, if she gets pregnant, if she gets pregnant, right? And this is the portion right here that we have been, that we have been studying right here, and some of the 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 the, the imagery, you know, what I'm saying some of the the corresponding, the corresponding imagery. Now you know that we we touched on this right here. Which, if you um, let's bring it up, yeah. If you if you check out the new um, the new uh, book that we have been able to publish, part of the Rastafari um, Rastafari Book Club, you understand the Rastafari Book Club that we have initiated, and you know we look forward to ideas from the brothers and sisters out there about how we can expand and build upon this and perhaps open up um open up uh, bookstores you know perhaps as extension of the ministry and branching of some of the activity you understand both addressing the the educational and intellectual and and the knowledge that we need as well as answering to the more practical economic and financial needs of the community. You know, we always talk about, or we hear folks talking about, we used to talk about being like the Jews. You know, oh, we should be like the Jews. Black people should learn from the Jews, so forth and so on. We should learn from Torah. You understand? We should learn of Jah, and we should learn from the Torah, and we should recognize who we be. You know what I mean? Recognize what is the truth of this lost sheep, this lost sheeple known as so-called black people the lost sheeple now in speaking about the numbers you know what I'm saying the so-called numbers jazz numbers in that sense 
versus Illuminati's. You know, perhaps he'll put it like that so some folks can get it. You know what I'm saying? And then recognize now in the teaching that these numbers are very significant. So let's review right here these particular numbers. Now, in the portion um, Leviticus uh, 12, Leviticus chapter 12, 1 to 5, in the, in the last vid on the law, Jah's law of motherhood, we touched on the matrix connection, the firstborn connection, the horus or the cherui, you know what I'm saying, Ethiopic speaking gutters, in the gutters language of ancient Ethiopia, the name is cherui, cheru, cherui, you know what I'm saying, which means, which is a name, which means elect or chosen. It actually literally means that from cheruiyah, from the gutters, cheruiyah. So when we talk about Christ and the Horus connection, the only way to understand that is Ethiopically. Is, is from an Ethiopic, a grounded and a rooted Ethiopian Hebrew perspective. Then it starts to become clear how Moses was learned in in the, the wisdom of the Egypts, and, and he was mighty in word and deed, and why he married a uh, uh, Ethiopian um, wife, in other words. You know, what, what the connection right there is with us as Ethiopian Hebrews, and when the Lord says through Amos or through Amos, Amos 9 and 7, aren't you like the children? Aren't you like the what? So we have this children connection also recurring. You understand? In this 27th um, portion, Torah portion, the law, the law of motherhood or Jah's law, mm, Jah's law of motherhood. Now, you hear a lot of our folks talking about goddesses, goddesses, goddesses. And, and and we understand that, just like the brothers talk about gods. I know, God, haven't you said it? You know, have, isn't I said ye are gods, all of you are? Yes, we are. But what is the real, what is the process? You see, so the RSS is about the process. You see, the RSS, the Rastafari Sabbath studies and, and, and Sabbath scrolls and, and the discipleship, it's about the Akahe, the Halakha. It's about the walk. It's about the progress. So each one who, who seeks to do the will, as Yeshua says in 717 of uh, John, and who seeks to do the will will know, will have the gnosis. You understand? Will have the gnosis. You understand? Or the particular gnosis. You understand? And when we speak about gnosis, uh, let's, let's bring, this, bring this up a little bit here if we can. Let's see how far we can bring this up. Um, down here, we speak about the, 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 the gnosis. You can see gnosis right at the bottom down here. The gnosis, the G1108. So if you have the, scof the, the, the strong concordance, look it up. It's the act of knowing. It's knowing the act. You understand? It's knowing the act. Let's, let's see if we can. Okay, here we go. Here we go. There we go right here. Gnosis. You see gnosis right here? Gnosis. Uh, gnu, gno, gnosis, gnosis, the gnosis. The gnosis is knowing, and then you see in parentheses, the act. Second, by implication in parentheses, by wist, knowledge. Then King James Version, it's knowledge, it's the science, it's the real science. So what's the real science now of these particular numbers. Now, I made a little link in this particular season with the so-called Aton, you understand, with the Aton Pates thing, the Aton Pats thing, you understand, because he's back in the news, you know, for some strange reason, 33, what, 33 years later, he's back in the news, right? He was six going on, what, seven. You understand? He was six going on seven. Now, this particular set of numbers, the seven and the 33, this first particular set of numbers now is linked with the male, right? This second set of numbers, the 14 and 66, is linked with the female. 
Now let's understand this from the Torah, right? It says right here that John had told Musa, Moshe, to tell the Beit Israel and their loyalists, you know, and those who were joined to the God of the Hebrews, that when a woman at childbirth, law of motherhood, bore a boy or a male, she was to be unclean or ritually exempt for seven days and then remain in a state of blood, of blood purification for 33, for 33 days, right? For 30, so we have the seven days and 33 days. While if she bore a girl or a female child, she was to be unclean or ritually exempt for what, 14 days and then remain in a state of blood purification for 66, for 66 days. Now, all this is connected with the Orit Ze Lewawian or Leviticus, Vayikra, you understand, chapter 12, verses 1 to 5, right? Now, upon completing, now, when the woman now, right, completes her period of purification, now, I want you really to understand this purification idea. It's very, very important. It is part of the reason why we, you understand, all of us collectively and individually have so much psychic burden. You understand? Why we have a lot of kind of mixed up moods and attitudes, even though, you understand, we are inclined to the, to the good. You understand? Even though we are inclined to ja. You, you, you know, we desire the good. We desire job because it's about the process. What is the process? So first we have to learn the process. We have to get to know the process. As over here, we have to get the gnosis, you understand, of the process. All right, so here's where we're at, Leviticus chapter 12. You understand, Leviticus chapter 12. Now, in going through this particular chapter, Right here, we're learning about numbers. Now, there's more significance to these particular numbers for those brothers and sisters who are checking out the Kabbalah, like um, there's the brother Rashid, you understand, the brother Rashidi, the brother Rashid who has, has, has the vids out there. Go check out his vids. There's another brother, I think, Anoop, you understand, and Pooh, who also has some videos out there, and there's, you know, you got the internet, and there's a lot of other resources. We'll also, we'll try to make certain resources available and also provide um, particular teachings on the Ethiopic Kebele, because Kebele, Kabbalah, in its proper pronunciation, Kebele is an Ethiopic, you understand, it, it comes from the Afro-Shemitic. You see, the Afro-Shemitic are what languages like Hebrew, you understand, uh, languages like Ethiopic or Gutas, languages like Royal Amharic are all about, you, you know, and they are classified as Afro. But see, uh, this is what a lot of folks don't know. People just think it's a hairstyle. You understand, it's more than just a hairstyle, you know, and then you can break down Afro from Ephraim, you understand, doubly what? Fruitful. You understand, meaning doubly fruitful, and we know that the word doubly fruitful is the whole idea of the two truths. You understand, coming from ancient Gibbet, you understand, doubly fruitful is fruitful in, you know, to be fruitful. You understand, that means have children, right? Yeah, but it also means to have, have, have fruit, talking about the, the, the fruit that grows of the earth and, and, and be prosperous. The implied idea is prosperity, but in its, in its literal, direct, first sense is speaking about both the holy people and how does an holy people come about. This is what we're learning in, in Leviticus. The first aspect in chapter 11 is about the food. This is what's so interesting. The first aspect of this is teaching us, is teaching us about the food, that there are what you call um, food um, um, uh, dietary, some call it dietary laws. From a Hebraic perspective, it's the laws of Kash Arut, and we're utilizing this particular um, food, um, this particular food pyramid right here, the um, Okinawa, what's called the Okinawa diet food pyramid. We're using this as a basic example. But now, if you want to study this in more detail, now we have Rastafari. One of the first things that we speak about is is 
ital. What is ital? You see, so the ital connection is another portion of it that we want to teach on. So you can see how how within this there are subject matters that we're probably going to have to focus on kind of one by one and then also make that connection. So we're not going to kind of go into this food chart in the details that we would like. What we're saying is take a note of this, disciples, take a note, write this down, Leviticus chapter 11. Now, those who have a good uh, Schofield reference Bible, you don't got one, go to the website, www.lojsociety.org, and download a PDF of the Schofield reference Bible, right? Get a copy of the Schofield reference Bible, the, 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 the uh, first, I think it's the first edition, or the first, it's called the first Schofield um, Bible. There's other ones which are also good, but for us as disciples, so we'll be on the same page. We're using the first one, and you can go and download a PDF, use it on your media device, computer, or whatever like that. To print it out is a lot of pages, probably costs a lot of money, better just to get a book. But if you're going to use it on the, on the computer or the digital mobile equipment, then you can use it like that. But get it. Please get it because there's some, there's some footnotes to chapter 11. But the beginning of this holy God, like holy Jah, holy Rastafari, you see? So we're speaking about holy Jah, holy Rastafari in this particular Torah portion, in this particular series right here. And um, we're going we're gonna to want to go into some of the details of it. In fact, let me get my pen and paper too because, you know, we're telling – one, like Paul said, you know, at least he gets others prepared and he gets disqualified himself, you know, so we as a teacher, the preacher, have to also seek to do it ourselves. And some of these ideas as we're teaching actually are coming to us and we want to um, do due diligence, you understand, you know, do due diligence ourselves and um, make, a, make a note, you know, make a note of this to keep a reference of this ourselves as well. So we have that connection right there. So it begins with food. The first aspect, the beginning aspect of the holy God and the holy people connection actually begins with food. So according to theology, you understand, according to the true theology, Rastafari had it correct from such a time. And still, if we keep it in that um, order, the, the whole aspect of, of, of holy God, you understand? And so you can understand that, Jah, and the holy people, the people of the new name is Rastafari, yet that is based on the Beta Israel. And as a reference there, we have Amos, Amos um, 9 and 7 is, is one of the main key link verses. Now, the process, you understand, we say the process is the Torah portions, is the studies, is the discipleship. You understand? That's the process. You know, the process is like, okay, once we accept the idea, how do we go about to do it? So, Bamarinya in Amharic, we call it the Akahate. You understand? Akahate. In the Hebrew, it's known as the, the halakha. Biblically speaking, and you'll find this in the Bible, the Old Testament and the New Testament, it uses the words like our walk, you understand, our conversation, you understand, our behavior. It implies how do we, our etiquette. You could, let's call it our divine Etiquette. What is the divine etiquette? Now, all this comes under and is related to our divine heritage, right? Check out that, that vid again, and, you know, we're doing what we can, and we, we're also looking for um, praying for the laborers who can co-labor with us. But the first thing, basically, is if you can't study with us and learn with us and reflect that light of the King of Kings and his Christ with us, how can we be co on that level, how can we be co-laborers? This is why the teaching is so important, because there's, there's a lot of lost sheep and a lot of confused, mixed up and confused people that will say, this is just talking about it. 
but the, but the fact is that one thinks they know, but they don't know what they think they know because they never checked it out. They never weighed it. You understand? They never tested it. You know? So we have certain scripture that shows us, for example, John um, 7, 17, where it says anyone who seeks to do the will, seeks to do it. It's about the hearers. Remember the scripture speaks about the hearers, right, and the doers. Not to be a forgetful shema. You understand? You know, don't have a forgetful shema. You understand? Don't be a forgetful hearer. So we are saved, right? We are saved by what? By grace. You understand? But we must work out our salvation. We must learn and do. We must deny ourselves our way of looking at it, have a change of mind so we can cross this what? This Red Sea. You understand? We can cross from this old so-called world system to the true world order of the King of Kings and his Christ, to the true new world order in this Adis Zemin. So as a holy people, first of all, holy means to be set apart. As a holy people, according to the process here in Leviticus, it begins off with food. Mm -hmm. It begins off with what sort of food we eat. And now one thing about this um, Okinawa diet right here, it also is dealing with numbers, too. Like, like, look at the top, the red, the sweets, right? It says three, so it was zero to three. Meat, or poultry, or eggs, zero to seven. It was, it's so interesting because in today's world, in today's society, people eat, I think, maybe maybe more than double, you know, maybe maybe triple to double triple. You understand the amount of food. Some might even say ten times and meats, heavy, heavy meats. But even when you look at Torah and the scriptures, yes, we're talking about sacrifices here. We we're speaking about the animals as as types of Christ, as types of our Black Lord and Savior. But but let's not make no mistake about it that the people were not eating McDonald's because they had a bunch of cattle every day. They were not eating debtors. Every day. In fact, when you see how the debtors were consumed, you know what I'm saying, and utilized, you know what I'm saying, it was basically ritualistically speaking or according to the theological, say, needs, you know what I'm saying, of a people who were being kept, you know what I'm saying, who were being kept separate so that the Moshiach, you know what I'm saying, so that the chosen one, the Cherui, our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, could be born. You understand? And when Yeshua was born, the very interesting thing is that he fulfilled, notice that, he fulfilled, or it was fulfilled in Luke chapter um, 2, verses uh, 20, 20, I think 22, and, and there forwards, it is speaking about this particular area of Scripture, these eight verses these particular eight verses. So we touched on the numbers connection. Hopefully we'll get into the numbers um, connection a little bit more. You understand? Seeing how these these particular numbers, you understand, are misused or are abused, but how to overcome that is to understand it. Once you understand the true orientation of these numbers, What's the true orientation of these particular numbers? So we, we got the seven, seven days, 33, that's the male. You understand that this is the male right here? You understand? And here's the female. Now, for the male, there's the male has a link with the matrix. You understand? And that's in Exodus chapter 13. You see that link right there with the matrix. We touched on that in the previous portion. Now, upon completing her period of purification, now, when the the daughter of, 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 of Jah, the daughter of God, you understand, of his people, you understand, when she has given birth, she's completed that, you understand, uh, the days of her purification, whether it is the, the, the first set of numbers, 733, or if it's the second, 1466, you understand, she was to bring a lamb, she was to bring a lamb for a burnt offering, and a pigeon or a turtle dove, for a sin, a chatiyat offering. Now, we see that being fulfilled in um, New Testament sense uh, here in Luke chapter 
Luke chapter 2, verses 21 to 24. So put that down as a note for this particular section right here as we expand on it from from a Rastafari perspective, you know, and look forward, you know, to the documentation coming forward, you know, some of the basic documentation we're studying this now, you know, to, together collectively, you understand, and then from what we understand, you know, based on the foundation, then we seek to present that documentation for the record and, and even for the generation which is and for the generation which is to come. And the priest was to offer them as sacrifice, as a meswa, it's or a korban, korban note, you understand, to make expiation on her behalf. So that was done on her behalf, and we find that even with Yeshua, you understand, even with this Dengelmarium, you understand, with his mother, you understand, going forward to do such and such, you understand, within the within the Gospel of um, Luke, you know, so you we want to show you that that connection, teach you of the spirituality, of the theology that's behind it, but also show you these sort of images, you understand, so you can see it in its true humanity, in its true blackness, in the true humanity of our Lord, of Adoni. If she could not afford now, if she could not afford a sheep, Notice what it says, if she could not afford a sheep, she was to take two turtle doves or two pigeons, one for a burnt offering and the other for a sin offering. So what we see represented right here is that, you know, within this um, uh, Frederick uh, Goddard or Goodall painting, the, this, is, this is the poor widow. You understand, poor widow and, and her offering. You understand? Or, in this sense, you can see this in Leviticus chapter 20, uh, chapter um, um, 12, verse 8. Chapter 12, verse 8. And this is what completes now the law. You understand? The law of motherhood. But in order to understand the context of the law of motherhood, one would have to understand um, the very first aspect that opens this, and that's the dietary or the Levitical um, regulations of a covenant people. So such a covenant people also has to recognize, right, also has to recognize um, and regard as primary, you understand, what they eat, their food. So a holy people must have holy or holistic food. Holy people, holistic food. Holy people equals holistic food, right? And this is what we learn right here, Leviticus chapter 11. And then when we take a, a, a scan and um, related Ethiopic, um, uh, at some of our related Ethiopic um, materials, such as the Kibur Neges, you understand the Kibur Neges also speaks on this particular same matter when um, Minulik, or David II was returning to Ethiopia with the Ark of the Covenant and with the 12,000. We have a, there's a section right here which speaks on um, how the people were told and the people were given certain um, dietary, you know what I'm saying, certain dietary uh, prescriptions, certain dietary prescriptions. And, and, and that was the first thing that's one of the first things that is um, mentioned. Let's see if we can bring this up right here. One of the first things that is mentioned, they're told about what is the uh, clean foods, what is the unclean foods. You understand? Because health or taina, taina is very, very Important, Taina, as you say, Taina Yistalin, may he health be given. In, in those, may Jah give you health. This is a, an Ethiopian greeting, may health be given on my behalf, or may Jah give you health, because I have, I have said the word. I have said Taina, Taina Yistalin. So, so health is very, very important. See, nowadays it seems like health is a new thing. You know, everybody's talking about being healthy. 
you understand, that even in the counterfeit sense, it is still pointing, you know what I'm saying, to the true sense, you know what I'm saying, to the true way. So the food laws was given to the people as well, you know what I'm saying, in the Kubr Nagas. Uh, let's see if we can find that particular chapter, um, the Kubr Nagas. We're looking in, a new, in the new copy right here, and we're seeing if we can find that chapter where um, it's like before the people went in to Ethiopia, you understand, they were um, given certain... Um, they were given a certain charge. You know what I'm saying? They were given a certain charge. And one of the particular charges that they were given, you know what I'm saying, were what foods that they were to eat and what foods, you know, what foods were clean for them and what foods were in particular unclean. And that's in this particular um, volume right here. You probably can see this right here. That's in this particular volume right here, right? I right, get a copy of this, you know, and basically it reflects and refers to what we have here in Leviticus 11. So Israel, Israel, and therefore true Ethiopia, according to Amos 9 and 7, and must be remembered, was a nation living, a living nation on the earth under a theocratic government. You see, so when Rastafari, when we ionize Rastafari, we speak about a theocratic government, right? And then we speak about ital or, 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 or liberty, our liberty and debtors and, and, and watching what food we eat because Ainai is a isla or a kedus, a holy people. Holy God, Jah, holy people, Rastafari, in the revelation of it, in the fulfillment, in this in this present dispensation. So of necessity, the divine legislation concerned itself with the social. So divine legislation or divine laws. You understand? These are I and I laws as a people. So when we speak of sovereignty, we have to, first of all, be in laws. You know what I'm saying? Be in laws, be in covenant, grow up, learn. You know what I'm saying? Do so that we would be sovereign and not slaves or, or under, under the Gentiles, as we have been under the, in, during the times of the curse. Of necessity, the divine legislation concerned itself with the social as well as with the religious or the spiritual, the spiritual life of that people. To force upon every um, word of that legislation, to force upon it is a typical uh, meaning is 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 to is is to strain, you understand, to to force upon that. So it's in grace. This is what we speak about it in grace, not in the Old Testament sense, but in the in the New Testament sense. You understand of our Black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now, um, we give some uh, verses here that that points it out. First Corinthians uh, chapter ten, verses one to eleven. For documentation in Hebrews chapter 9, verses 23 and 24, to strain it beyond all reasonable, you know what I'm saying, interpretation. You know, I mean, get into some sort of a thing. So this is why the food chart or the food pyramid right here is um, um, very, very, is very, very important. So Rastafari in its basic, in its basic um, theocracy. And, and it's one on one and basic theocracy. Um, emphasize food. You understand? Know emphasize food and 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 the, uh, uh, coin the word liberty. Liberty. You see what I'm saying? Liberty. And you can see Levi in there and live and to live as well in that whole idea. You you always and rejected the whole die and diet and and, and death in favor of life and, and the and the life giver, you understand the God and Father of our black Lord and Savior. Now, the motherhood section is interesting because we didn't say all or teach all that we could teach on this. And I'm saying this mainly to mainly to the sisters, but also to the brothers, because as a brother learned these things were very you know, were very informative. You, you you know what I mean? You get to see without knowing these things there's a lot of blindness. So part of the mixed up moods and attitudes and a lot of the the 
the the strains and the difficulties that we might have as black men and black women and in, in relationships because we're still trying to you know live 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 righteousness with 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 ignorance or in ignorance or trying to fulfill it because we're zealous and not having not having the prerequisite the prerequisite knowledge but what we would find interesting if we would study these things um, for example, in Leviticus and in, in Vayikra, Vayikra, we find that these verses are saying that a woman is to be regarded, right, as as um, ritually exempt in that sense, you know, in that sense, unclean for seven days, plus plus three and thirty, which equals together now forty. You know, saying which equals the number. The number forty, you understand? The number forty. So when we take these two, you understand? Know saying when we take these two numbers right here, the two top numbers, that would equal forty. Now, it says uh, if she has a boy, he must be circumcised on the eighth day. Now we find that to be true in Leviticus two and um, um, twenty-two, that section right there. Um, if a woman has a girl, right? If the mother has has a girl child, she is regarded as unclean and ritually exempt for two weeks or the 14th. So we have the 14th, which is double of, the, of, of, of this. Now you can see that also this is as above, so below. These are reflected to other cycles as well if you, if you comprehend it. So um, plus Three score and six days. Note that a score, according to the Bible, a score is 20. So when you hear about score, it's like a 20. Three score, you understand, or, you know, three score is 20, 20, 20. You, you know, so that would be, six, that, that'd be uh, 60, you know what I mean? Um, so it's three times 20 divided by six. I mean, plus six, plus six is 66. Plus two weeks or 14 days, which is, which is 80. So we have 80 days. So the top we have 40, and then we have then we have 80. You understand? In, in the sense of numbers, uh, or men and women equal. It seems like we should say women are greater in the sense that it's a greater number. But if we look at souls, we are equal before our God and before our Father. That's why He regards us as children, male and female. But we know this is divine. You understand? Melical Tawi. Because Musa, right, Mo Moses, being a male, he could never have understood some things. See, so we know that there's a, there's, there's a divine in these particular numbers. Divine is, is manifesting itself, you understand, through the wisdom of these particular numbers. Now, does the evildoers, do the evildoers abuse it? They, are, they don't use these numbers. They abuse these numbers, you understand. They abuse these numbers because they have to use, you know, saying what is of what is of the true, the blameless creator, you know, saying even to do their wickedness, you know, you know, all all things was made through the word, you know, through the word. He used the word to make all things, but so the word is the creator, but not all word is being used to glorify or to honor, you know, saying to honor the. Creator and therefore to honor life, and that is why you know we've been in this you know death matrix. Mm -hmm. That's an enemy. Death is an enemy as well. But the scripture says death is the last enemy. So let's start with the first things, and the first things is the food. You understand? Know the first thing is the matter of the food. But now when we move past the food for a moment. And we get to the second aspect, that is the Jah's law of, of motherhood. He's speaking to the mothers here. This is speaking to the sisters. And I, and I hope and pray that sisters will check this out and, and really get into it. And if, if any are interested, perhaps, in having a, a sisterhood kind of a, a reading room or certain books that I and I can suggest along these lines, so women can find out that half of the story that they haven't been told, Yovis and I now be more than willing, Yovis, to coordinate with the sisters, you know, that would seek such. And I would suggest this vid that we did from earlier, um, womb man's worth, like say woman's worth, womb man's worth, an older um, audio right here 
um, because of the same truth that we find out. Like Moses, as we say, could not, he could never have known the necessity for the 40 days for a male and the 80 days for a female. You understand the so-called uncleanness or ritual um, impurity in that sense and exemption from other aspects of the community, of the woman, of the mothers at childbirth. Now, Musa, I and I, great lawgiver, would have just made it 40 days. If, if, if he was coming from how we learn things in this Western Gentile society, Moses should, should have just had um, 40 days for both of them. Why would he double it unless he understood the womb man's worth? Mm -hmm. Musa overstood the womb man's worth. And how do we know that he overstood the womb man's worth? Well, listen up. Listen up, right? Um, Yahweh, right? Yahweh, who, he who is who he is, he overstood creation. You know, he overstood the wisdom, the Hukma, the Sophia, you understand? The, the wisdom of the creation and therefore of the woman. And he gave this divine um, commandment and this knowledge to Musa, you right, to Moses. Ha Elohim overstood that it takes 80 days to adjust. This is the secret. This is one of the secrets of motherhood. You know, and I've, I've been hearing sisters talking about this. I mean, there's some that do know this and talk about it, admittedly. But a lot of ones and ones don't even um, understand that or even the real ancient connections. Let's just bring this in. You understand the ancient connections, even right here with Tauret. You understand the ancient connections with Tauret right here. Some say this symbol right here is where the law of motherhood, you understand, was un overstood from. Now, of course, some are getting caught up on the form because they're not able to interpret the logic, interpret the symbol right here. This is Tauret. Tauret, or some say Torah. Tauret. Torah right here. We can go a little more into detail on that, and y'all willing, we will, but that's very connected. That's at the root of the ancient knowledge of this, but not all cultures overstood that because all cultures did not overstood, um, could not read the language of God. The language of God is written in the stars, in the heavens. You know what I'm saying? Man, you know, man and the demons and the rest of it and the fallen angels, they don't got no power over that. You understand? I mean, they got they got a little bit, very little power in it, but no power over that. So just understand that. Understand that right there. It was Ha Elohim who, under, who understood that it takes 80 days to adjust for a female child, but it only takes 40 days when a woman, you understand, a womb man, in other words, has a, a um, male child. Now, many mothers have testified to this, and I've spoken to, to, to many and about this because I was curious. I wanted to find out, is it really true? You know, so all I could find out is to ask, you know, the mother, and many mothers being mothers, both of male and female children, they understand or overstand this very, very well. You understand? Now, um, during the pregnancy of a girl, you know, it takes more out of a woman both mentally and physically. You know, a lot of us didn't know this at first. We, we, we learned this later on. Even Dr. York and, and, and the Holy Tabernacle back in 1992 and before then, they touched on this. They're some of the, the first to touch on this uh, amongst us and black folks, once lost but now found Beta Israel. But a lot of ones and ones, and as we study these things deeper, we start to see the ancient connections when we get to our Ethiopian, our Hebraic root. Mentally, um, women feel and have testified to feeling more irritable. Physically, they find their body it seems to um, break down more with a female child during and after pregnancy. There's more of a breakdown. Scientifically speaking, speaking from the knowledge of the gnosis, the need for a female for a female sex hormones, it draws themselves from the mother as well as the fetus, whereas in the male fetus, you know, as in the male child, understand this, in the male 
um, fetus has its own supply of testosterone. You know, it has its built-in or inborn in, in, or onboard testosterone, and therefore it is self-sustaining. It is self-sustaining. So when a female has a female child, there is a draw on certain feminine um, sex hormones or female sex hormones that are drawn from the mother as well as drawn from the fetus. You know what I'm saying? While in the male fetus, the male fetus has its own supply of testosterone and therefore is self-sustaining. Perhaps it's one of the reasons why Moses says in Exodus chapter 13, another kind of a number, you understand, um, why he says about the male opening the matrix. Now, they didn't say the matrix word in the New Testament, but they probably should have said um, opening the matrix in the New Testament in Luke uh, 2 and 23, since it's actually based on um, Exodus chapter 13, Exodus chapter 13, which is the verses again, 13, 12, and 16. Since it's actually based on that older scripture, they should have linked that right there. But we know by studying the root, you understand, by studying the, 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 the foundation, the Maseret, the Yesod, so it's in the foundation, we, we know this. So that's very interesting. So the mere fact is that the male, the male contains XY chromosomes while the female contains XX. You know what I'm saying? The female now, you know, was, contains XX, XX, um, uh, XX combination of chromosome shows that there's a different development. There's a different process. Let's say it like that. There's a different process or procedure. Aka, hey, that's, that's um, going on. Um, Clark's commentary by Adam Clark, page 548 says that some of the ancient physicians assert that a woman is in the older in, in, is in the order of nature much longer that the woman is in the order of nature much longer and um, completely recovering after the birth of a female than after the birth of a male child. So that's one of the, so, so the order of nature kind of shows these things, you know. So people would kind of mock these things or not comprehend the, the, the logic and the healthiness of it. You know what I'm saying? Um, something is, something is, is wrong, you know, is, is, is psychically, psychologically, mentally, and maybe physically wrong with them. You, you, like in this society, you know, where, you know, women even talk about, I want to work right after, and, and, and they don't understand what they're doing to themselves. You, you know what I mean? What they're doing to themselves. Yet most of the medical dictionaries, you know, in the West, you understand, and among the, the, the white Anglo-Saxon Protestants are written by um, males. How are the, the white males, you know, how is the white man, in other words, you know, the Gentile going to understand or understand a woman's nature at child at childbirth. Now, what's interesting is that Moses, his his he has strong woman in that sense, a strong Hebrew, vigorous. Let's say it in a biblical way, a vigorous. You understand and virtuous Hebrew woman in his family, from his from his mama to his sister to his wife, so forth and so on. You know, so there's a strong you know, maternal, you could say mother side, even the fact that his name means drawn out of the waters and how it connects with the wisdom of the Egypts, you know. So this is a woman's topic, basically, and it should be explained better by a woman. This particular topic right here and, and, and the whole um, the whole biblical, the whole biblical connection. Now, when you look at the, the idea of matrix and then you look at the word, Mahitan, ma in the in the Ethiopic and 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 Arihim, you know Arihim, which is Mahiret Mahari backward in the sense, you know the Arihim, so that that word which means womb or matrix in the in the Hebraic, um, in the in the I think the Western. I think we would call them, or really the Eastern, yeah, in the Eastern Shemitic, 
because we are more the Western Shemitic. When you're in that part of the world, you, you can recognize what we're talking about. It has the idea of mercy, you understand, of compassion. So the womb has the idea of mercy and compassion when you, when you start to study the, 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 the Syriac or the Seretic. You understand? You start to study the Hebrew. You understand? And even and especially the Ethiopic. But when you start to study the words for the womb, you will learn much about the womb that even today's uh, um, gynecological science knows or admits little to nothing of. So the idea is mercy, compassion, to spear, to let off, to be merciful. But the real meaning of the womb, get this, is yield. The, the, the real meaning of the, the womb is yielding, is yielding. You know, I'm sure there's a psychological, spir spiritual, psycho, a psychophysiological connection, you know, as we say, mind over body to that, or body over mind when the, when the star is on its head, when it's flipped. The word um, um, rahim or rahim, basically it describes and it denotes the yielding of the woman's womb where the channel can open up for a baby to pass through, which is in itself probably the greatest ta'amurat or the greatest miracle in that sense. You know, um, yet since every child is not born perfect, or what we would say as fitzun, complete in that sense according to type, you know, when we look at it according to type, this does not seem like a, a mercy. You know, something that's a systemic anomaly. Some children are born, in other words, deformed. You understand? If a child is born deformed or without a, a heart or, or without a brain or only those who, who work in hospitals, they really know how many deformities really occur that they, you know, that, that they see. I mean, and you would not see birth always as a, 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 um, a ruhama. That's that word. Remember ruhama, Hosea? Look at Hosea. Check out Hosea for a moment. Really check out Hosea where it says low, low uh, ruhama and then ruhama. You understand that, that, uh, that word uh, ruhama, you understand, and, and the meaning with that also connects with the, with the, with the greater reasoning of, of, of these divine feminine aspects or speaking about the motherhood and connecting with sisterhood, you know, as well with Ruhama or Rahama or Rahama, uh, to say Mahari, you understand, to say Mihiret, mercy. It is easy to say that a deformed child is the result of the parents. You know, like, remember in that situation where, where remember the situation where Yeshua, um, there was someone who was born blind, and the disciples asked him, why was the man born blind? Was it his parents who done something? Like, it was almost like similar to Hindu or, or certain type of Eastern philosophies. They were asking, is it for one of those particular reasons? And Christ says, um, no, you know, um, the, the, the reason for it is to show the glory of God. It's for the glory of Jah. Mm -hmm. Because he was showing us that, that, that when we overstand, you understand, we basically can overcome these things. It's because of the ignorance that these things are already going on. And um, ones have an effect you know, in it, but this whole thing is also genetic. And when we talk about sin, we've got to talk about hereditary, not just within the family, but within the whole human family. You understand? And it's kind of hard to kind of trace all those individuals. Think about one, how complex one life is, much less thousands or millions and generations of overlapping people. Mm -hmm. You want to get a headache, try to judge all of that. You know what I mean? If you want to get a headache, try to judge all of that. You know, or just, just uh, examine yourselves, as the scripture says. Mm -hmm. Examine yourselves. Yes, sharing is caring, right? Um, but also have to know who to share with. It is easy to say that a deformed child is a result of the parent not living right or not exercising or doing this or doing that. But that's not always true. That's where we get the logical fallacies from. Woman or womb man can go to prenatal care. 
they can take all the vitamin or the vitamins necessary. They can exercise. And sadly or unfortunately or, uh, you know, regrettably, they can give birth to a deformed or a malformed or even an unformed child, right? And that has to do with the information. Think about it. The, the reason for those things is the information. It's like we say about the data, about reading, you know, the, the, the quality of information that one puts in and then how one re receives that information. You understand? Receive. So you got to check yourself. Examine yourself is the key word in discipleship and in, 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 in the new birth, you know. So the word um, arham or rihim is not always a mercy. You understand? It's not always a ruhama to women, but that's not particularly saying that it's each individual woman's fault that she has come to that situation. You know, it may not always be like people try to like like the friends of Job, Jobab. They try to like say, maybe you did something, maybe you think you're righteous, but maybe you really did something you don't want to admit to. You know, that's why you're going through that. You're like It has to be because of something. They, That's their worldview, but it's faulty. It's a faulty worldview. So the restrictions that are added in many religious um, in many religious practices seems to lean they, they seem to lean in the favor of the male you know what I'm saying um, but it's not just because it's written by men as some would assume that's a logical fallacy it's not that's not the reason for it coming from Jah coming from 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 father coming from source you know what I'm saying coming from Amlakachin Amlakine it's not the reason coming from from source, you know, but it's more because of also responsibility, you understand, to the sins of first father. You see, first father sin, and stay tuned for a, a first father, you understand, the first father uh, lectures and sermons on first father. Yes, it's there in the Bible, and the Mayans, I know, the Mayans speak about um, first father, first father as well, you know, um, and there's a and there's a connection, but now um, there's a lot of things that are taught in different religions, and we're not going to go into you know all of that per se. You know, at this particular time, we just want to let off on that particular point. You understand about the you know about the the womb and about the matrix. And let me just see if if in closing, if if this. If they have anything in this particular book about Matrix, sometimes, ironically, and in a very weird um, sense, they do. Cause we like to check out the word, check out the code as much as is possible. But Matrix, the basic word of Matrix is the womb. You understand the basic basic word, the key, the, the key word here in Matrix is the womb. Now, what we're about to Go into the third aspect in the next video. We want to touch on the next aspect of it. But before we, in fact, yeah, we'll, before, before we get into that, um, the next section on leprosy. You know what I'm saying? Now it's talking about certain skin, you know what I'm saying? Skin diseases or leprosy is, 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 is spoken about here, right? And then also there's a section on clothing, you know what I'm saying? On clothing connected with Tazaria. Kitas Aria and Bitar is if she if she's pregnant or if she's yeah, if she's pregnant or if she conceives in that sense. In other words, if the seed the you know, if the if the, if the sperm and, and the egg, you know, if the egg, the real egg, that this this is the real egg, not the Easter egg. But here's the real egg. So you can see some some linkages in these things, how when we talk about the stars or the heavens it's also important, the interpretation, the interpretation. Paul talks about that when he's talking about languages. He also speaks about the, um, you know, the interpretation. Now, what you're seeing right here is a constellation. You're saying a constellation that is called coma, coma. Now, in the, in the new book um, that we've published, that the Rastafari Book Club has has as available now called the witness of the stars um looking at this uh this copy um this first print copy in fact 
in fact, um, I think maybe a, a couple of folks, we, we, we updated, we found a, a very interesting Rastafari connection. I and I bad, you'll say, mea culpa, you know, yene, yene sititet. Um, about the date. We thought we was publishing the fourth version of it, the fourth edition, but actually we was publishing the first one. So it wasn't the 1921, actually it was 1893. And in Rastafari Revelation, no doubt you all know, 1893 is one year after 1892. And the the Son of Man, or Rastafari, you understand the the Lich Teferi prophecy, the Son of Man prophecy being fulfilled in Ethiopia, vis a vis concerning the revelation of Rastafari, our Godfather and King of Kings, Moan Bessazem Negeri Yehuda, Kedamawi Haila Selase, Siuma Egeziabi Her Nugusa Neges Ze Ethiopia. So there's a key connection with this particular, with this graphic here that you're seeing. Um, uh, comes from now. What I want you to focus on, right here. You understand? I want you to focus on is the link between these two images. You understand? And then in the next part of this um, 27th uh, RSS Rastafari Sabbatical Studies um, and 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 Sabbath Scrolls, uh, we'll touch on this right here. This link between the two because the the rootage of true motherhood for us as Ethiopian Hebrews is based on these principles right here. Now what we see is the, the, the first type that was seen in, in the heavens, right? As above, right? So below and manifesting in a distant Gulmaria, you understand, in the, the virgin or the maiden, you understand, the black maiden, um, Maria. So we're going to touch on this part, the connection right here, that kind of begins off, you know, the whole prophetical cycle, even from ancient days, and we can see a prefiguring in this, or at least an interpretation, a link. They were looking at the same thing, but they interpreted a little bit different, even with the Orset, you understand, and the Cherui, or and the Chosen One, you understand. So we see ancient prophecy and we are to be, if we choose, according to the choice, the fulfillment, you understand, um, we, we choose. Choose ye this day, you understand, who you shall follow. Choose ye this day the life, you understand, Jai Rastafari, the true life of the God and Father, our black Lord and Savior, Shua HaMoshiach, or, or the chaos, or the void. In other words, choose to cross through the Red Sea of 2012, you understand, and beyond, or... To, to, to perish with the spiritual Egyptian. So stay tuned, my brothers and sisters. Shalom, Ras Tefari. And a Ras Yadinos Tefari name. I and I, thy brother, when them Yadin love the I all because I, I them love to study. I and I, Father's word, and our black Lord and Savior, our big brother, Yeshua's testimony. Shalom.